oil is coming, so everybody is anticipating that sooner or later we're going to be, I mean, feeling good. What can Ghana get out of oil? The oil is produced in the sea and is exported from there. And nobody's going to see it. Will some of it come and be transformed on shore? Now, gas, luckily, doesn't travel very well. And I'm very proud that we at the World Bank are working closely with the government to bring the gas more. And we're dreaming together about how to develop uh, a whole industry around it, starting with separation of the liquids for the local market and then using the dry gas for energy. Down the line, there are many ideas from uh, producing fertilizers to various uh, other industries and if there is enough gas as i said one could fuel uh, much more uh, clean energy in the region so uh, those industries would then create good jobs the challenge of course is to make sure that the local industries uh, the local people get the right education sell to these companies the various services and that they do not become an, encl an enclave that just dirties and exports like, like the gold sector has been. That's, that's a sector inherited from the colonial era that still functions. It's, I have to be careful, but it, 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 it does not function in ways that benefit the whole economy. And so the big challenge is how to, to, to turn part of the oil industry into something else than an enclave. So a large part of, of, of the challenge in oil and gas is outside the oil and gas sector, is how to ensure that other sectors, and in particular agriculture, remains competitive in the face of cheaper foreign exchange. And that is going to take investment in that sector, very systematic, very well planned. Uh, one needs to move now beyond these rhetorics of agriculture is very important. And I think Ghana has now an obligation to find ways to, to strengthen agriculture very rapidly. There has been many good models. They need now to be scaled up in a very systematic manner. And I think the big challenge in the oil era is finding ways quickly to turn the poorer farmers into wealthier business people that become the engine of, of, of the, the second engine of the economy. A 50-minute roundup of some of Ghana's voices cannot tell this country's story to the end. Even though the road remains long, the citizens of the new Ghana are serving notice to the world to watch their country sail to new heights of prosperity. The future of Ghana is bright, provided our leaders will make good use of our natural resources. I think we have a bright future. The future of Ghana is very bright. Personally, I think Ghana has a very bright future. The future of Ghana is as good as it's bright. I believe that. Ghana can do much better by investing in its people. And I think that if we don't provide education and a training at all levels, we will miss that boat. Because paradise is right here in Ghana. I believe it. I can say business is very good in Ghana, indeed, yeah. I'm real safe because of that kind of worry. And I think Ghana is a real peaceful country, uh, one of a remarkable peaceful country in West Africa. The country is safe, and uh, we, in business side, uh, we, can, we work uh, safely. Uh. Um, you know, in Ghana, people very keen to, to ask the first and second. I think, um, you know, we can uh, offer some uh, good quality for the Ghana people. The third is, about is you know, uh, we can earn some money from here. The Ghanaian people and even the foreigners are still used to buying their stuff abroad and uh, bringing it back here to the country. Um, and I think everybody should uh, like motivate all the new shops, all the businesses and uh, spend their money more here in Ghana, not abroad. Of course, you know, you know, I've visited a, long, a lot of countries here in West Africa. Actually, this is the most safe country I met till now and it's totally different than other countries. Personally, if I have actually if I have money, I will I will invest. I am thinking thinking now to invest in Ghana. It's very uh, the culture here is very good. The people is very nice. The economic is going up. I think we have a great Ghana. Uh, we have more to go, but we have all the pieces in place to polish up into a wonderful place. You know what this is? If you go on the and look at the map of the world. 
Ghana falls here, the zero. You're gonna, Ghana is at the center of the universe. And the song that I wrote said, God put us at the center of the universe for a reason. The basic institutions are there. There's more than one credible party. Nobody wants to lose this country. We are the shining bright star of Africa. And I think Ghana is coming into its own. And I also believe that Ghanaians this year have taken a whole new appreciation of Ghana. But at the bottom of it is we need to work out our economics. Because at the end of the day, it boils down to our economic strength. Um, apart from our spiritual strength. Ghana, Ghana could do it. Easy. Easy. I'm like a, a grain of sand on the beach, if you consider the potential. We definitely see, see optimism and in, a belief in the future. This is a country where you can see the end of the tunnel. It is a country on the march, comfortable with its, its governance system, comfortable with its traditions and its roots, and looking into the future, uh, as you say, joyously, as one where they have something to offer to the world and, and, and they have uh, their assets to, to, to irrigate increased wealth. It's true. Yet it's a country that once in a while is depressed. We also see this pull me down factor. We're through with poverty. We're through with being highly indebted anything. We're through. I think that God gave us oil at this time, not earlier, so that we can learn from what others did or didn't do with their oil, so we'll be in a different place. I think we're filled with oil. I think we're going to a new place, completely new, and it will have nothing to do with the spirit of poverty. Because there's a spiritual awakening also happening right now in Ghana, and that awakening is also identifying what that spirit of poverty looks like and we will have nothing to do with it. I think 10 years from now, if we should have this interview again, we'll be telling a different story.